dear friends. I'm very honored and privileged that I'm having a second occasion to interact with you all. On Saturday evening, I had the great pleasure of interacting with you on a topic which is very dear to me, and I think it will be equally dear to you. The topic is, what did Narendra Swami Vivekananda thought of his matchless master? All through his literature, the what he has left behind, we find only a small chit of a booklet where he has only highlighted the unselfish, deep, compassionate love for all that emanated from Sri Ramakrishna. And that love made people absolutely slave to him. The word slave as a in it made them totally attached, dedicated, and devoted to him. That was the write-up in that small booklet. You may know also, when he was young, Sri Girish Chandra Ghosh requested him, Naren, you are the dearest of Sri Ramakrishna, why don't you write a biography of his? And Swamiji said, I feel so incompetent, in able, unable to write about his life. You better not request me. And he escaped that responsibility. But later on, before he passed away, his sense of responsibility towards his master forced him to leave behind for posterity his idea of what Sri Ramakrishna was. And in a very, very I would say clever manner, he wrote down the Arati Stotram, that is Khandana Bhava Vandana, and Om Ritam. Now, we sing it every day. Phonetically, we are very much acquainted with it. But what is the import of those words. And this is our great shortcoming, pardon me, all us included. The shortcoming is whenever we hear a word very many times, that phonetical acquaintance of the sound makes it feel we know what it means. We never spare ourselves a little time to study what is its meaning in practical spiritual life and what was Swamiji's intention? What ideas did he want to convey? That goes lacking because we think we know it. We know it by heart. But we know it by heart phonetically, not the impact that should leave on us every time, every day, that we sing it and open ourselves up to receive it, to assimilate it, to absorb it, and finally saturate ourselves with those ideas. And those ideas, Swamiji in general said, man-making, character-building ideas, which will help you to improve the quality of your personality. And that improvement doesn't move in a circle. It goes straight, direct to its goal. What is that goal? Manifestation of divinity already within ourselves, of which we have no idea now. But these Tava and Stotras 
and all sabars and sutras, hymns and choir, choirs and music and etc. that rotate around the awareness of presence of God is to be absorbed, is to be assimilated till your personality is saturated with that idea. And in that process, you be and become one with God. This is the purpose. Now, on Saturday, I spoke about the Pranam Mantra. And I find there are many here who were not present that day. So I could not complete it. You know, I'm a garrulous person. I keep on speaking. I could not continue, complete it within the time span. So when Swamiji told me, Sarvadevananda Ji told me, would you kindly address the devotees who are participating in today's retreat, something that you feel like? It immediately came to my mind, the Holy Mother wants that I complete in this second session. So, what happens is, he, after reciting all the qualities that he found in his matchless master, he summarized it in a pranam mantra. Pranam mantra is the last obeisance, the last prayer that one can do to complete the process of assimilation, absorption, and saturation. So let me continue from where I left. But I will give you a hint of what was talked before. But today I am told you have all by turns read the gospel and you have read it from page, first page to the last page. And the gospel is nothing else but ideas that emanated from Sri Ramakrishna in the simplest possible language, whereby the academic or high intellectual flight of logic and philosophy has been made very simple. Now let us see what Swami Vivekananda thought of his matchless master a rather academic manner. So let us try to understand it in the simplest possible manner in which Sri Ramakrishna accent. His similes, his allegories, his parables make the most difficult portions of the scriptures easily understandable to a young child. Swamiji kept it a little above that and it is for us to try and understand what did Swamiji mean in that Pranam Mantra. He says, let me repeat the mantra first. Sthapakaya cha dharmasya. The next is, next half of the first line is Sarva Dharma Swarupine. First half of the second line is Avatara Varishthaya. And the fourth section is Ramakrishnaya Te Namaha. I bow down to thee, O Lord Sri Ramakrishna. Because to my understanding, dear, you are the establisher of dharma. A. Let us have a word-to-word -word translation first. Dharmasya sthapaka. Sthapaka means establisher. Of what? Dharma. What is dharma? And we score a blank these ritualistic actions and activities go in the name of dharma. 
that is the practical aspect of disciplining yourself, cleansing yourself, so that you can absorb, assimilate, and saturate yourself with that idea. So, dharmasya sthapaka. What is dharma in essence, dears? It is translated as religion, which is, I'm afraid, a little too short of its exact meaning. Dharma means dharayate iti dharma. What is dharma? Now let me put it very simply to our understanding. It is a basket full of man-making character-building ideas, holding on to which dharayate, holding on to which you protect yourself from degrading into a normal biological creature. We are biological creatures, but we are the most evolved biological creature. And everybody agrees to that. We have come at an age where evolution has given us such faculties, which is unknown to other biological creatures. The most important is the faculty of discriminating between what is good and what is bad. Dharma means a basket full of ideas, heaps of ideas, holding on to which this highly evolved human being protects himself from degrading himself. A one perspective of looking at it. The other pos positive perspective of looking at it is holding on to which you are capable of manifesting the potential divinity already within you by qualitative improvement of your well-developed personality and with your effort by absorption and saturation you revolutionize that evolution, make it quicker, and you manifest the divinity already within you. This is dharma, and that is an eternal value. It, doesn't, it is not created at a point of time. All the scriptures of the world say it is the voice of God, it is the exhalation and inhalation of God. That's all the scriptures say. So how does the word establisher fit with it? That which is eternally existing, how can one establish it? So what Swamiji meant, that he used these two words, which we cannot understand and collate together. Dharma is eternal, perennial, perpetual, everlasting, eternal, and you say you are the establisher, how can these two coexist? What did he establish? The lost veracity, the lost validity, the lost relevance of religion, which was being pushed in a corner as a superstition. This is what the word sthapaka means. Now study Sri Ramakrishna's life. You will find, as a material scientist, takes pride of this statement, whatever we fundamentally say is true, we have the wherewithals to utilize it to improve the quality of life of a human. Electricity. An example. It was a fundamental science and a technology converted that theory by practice into a practical element which has changed our lifestyle. That is why the material scientists are very proud. Whatever is true must be proved in an experimental laboratory to make it perceptible by our five sense organs. 
I must see it, I must hear it, I must taste it, touch it, and I'm being it. This is what it is. How can you establish existence of God? You can't produce on a platter. See, here is God. What did Sri Ramakrishna do? He converted his human personality into a testing laboratory and he experimented with all the major religious movements that human society has developed for themselves up till now. And he chose only the most important and major religions, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and thousand and one branches of Hinduism. Why Hinduism has thousand and one branches is a subject of its own. I may touch it if I have a little time later on. Let us proceed. So, Dharmasya Sthapaka means, here you are, my Lord Sri Ramakrishna, who have proved to the world by your life, by your conduct, by your behavior pattern, that there is something known as eternal dharma, which is the breathing of the divine, which is everlasting, never failing. And that if you can hold on to, you will be able to free yourself from bondage of ignorance. So sthapaka here, dictionary-wise, means establisher. Dharmatsya sthapaka here means that you are an establisher, but not of dharma, the heaps of man-making character-building ideas. What you have established is the lost credibility, the lost veracity, the lost validity, the lost relevance of spiritual sciences. Now you understand, having read the gospel all through the day, you must have absorbed ideas and see what role Sri Ramakrishna played. He played the role of re-establishing validity, credibility, relevance, etc., 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 of that eternal wisdom which has been pushed into a corner as superstition because it could not be displayed in a material laboratory costing billions of dollars. It was manifested and expressed in his behavior pattern. He absorbed it to such a manner that his behavior transformed those subtle India's ideas into a code of behavior and conduct, a behavioral pattern. Then he moves on. He says, Sarva Dharma Swarupa. What does it mean again? You have, sir, drawn our attention to the essential spirit of religion. Now, mind you, this was written about, I don't know how many years ago, 1897 or 98 or 99. I'm not very good at figures. It was written down put into music and circulated. Mind you, today we find religion is supposed to unite humanity, but religion is used to cut at each other's throat. I will not name any denomination. Bigotry, fanaticism, a part of an enlightened concept of religion. And that's happening. Foreseeing this, Sri Ramakrishna practiced all the present important relevant religions in his life, and he practiced it according to the discipline and ritual as entailed, and he achieved the goal. 
he had the vision of Christ, had the vision of Ma Janaki and Sri Ramachandra, had the vision of Hanuman Swami, and the style of vision was fun, fu funny. He didn't look at it like you and me. He saw the essence of the spirit comes and merging with him. Oneness of the essence of various religions. That is what Sri Ramakrishna displayed through his life and his teachings. What does it mean? It's a broad-based pyramid or a broad-based cone. The base is circle. There are 360 degrees in the circle. 60 minutes dividing, multiplying with degrees, another 60 minutes for seconds. I worked out in a calculator, it is 1,296,000 points in a circle, equidistant from each other. From there, if you draw perpendicular upwards in a circle, you'll reach the cone. The top is a point and merging into a sense spirit. No material is there. There's essential concept of eternal spirit, the Holy Ghost. Atman or Brahman or Shunyam. Sri Ramakrishna, foreseeing what is to happen in this world, practiced all prevalent religions and said in four different words. What was that? Four different words. Jato mat, tato pot. As many isms, each of them is a direct and independent means to that goal. The world has never seen before such a massive, immeasurable spiritual wisdom. Don't think Swamiji was carried away or we are being carried away by emotionalism, by Guru Bhakti. Swamiji was far from it. He was criticized by his brother monks because he did not preach Sri Ramakrishna by name in the United States. And they were so, I would say, vigorous in their criticism. Poor Swamiji wept that he's not being understood. So that type of a man with such a sharp, penetrative logic and common sense will not be carried away by Guru Bhakti. He was totally dedicated to a robust logic and common sense and penetrative observation of what he learned from Sri Ramakrishna. The third word is, and I like to concentrate on it, the third word is avatara burishthaya. The word burishtha in Sanskrit is superlative. Good, better, best. Bara, buryan, burishtha. And we find Swamiji, without batting his eyelids, says, Dear Lord Sri Ramakrishna, you are the best of all avatars. My, my, what a parochial statement to make. You are the best. As if Ram was nowhere, Krishna is nowhere, Jesus doesn't belong to anywhere. Did Swamiji mean that? I'm afraid not. We would like to understand why, for what reason, Swamiji had to use this superlative, exposing his statement into total confrontation. Now please try to understand. Burishthata, from the Upanishadic point of view, there's a shloka in Mundaka Upanishad. He says the last concluding line of the four line shloka is Eshaha Brahma Vidam Burishtha. Such a person, the description comes before, I'll come back to it. Such a person 
is the best specimen of a Brahmavit. Brahmavit is knower of Brahman, knower of the self. And as you know, that knowledge of the self doesn't come in parts and pieces. It comes as a whole. Either you are a Brahmanga, or you are not a Brahmanga. There's no percentage business there. I'm 10% Brahmanga, he's 50% Brahmanga. Nothing doing. That knowledge is a wholesome whole. Then, if it is a wholesome whole, knower of that wisdom, how can it be compared? The comparison lies in the behavior pattern and the flow of life of that person. Now let us go back to the Upanishads again. The above three lines describes of the Brahmanga Purushas, of the Brahmavits, who is the best? Prano hi esha just sarvabhutaira vivati. Let's stop here. That knower of the self realizes, understands, and transforms his understanding into behavior pattern. What is his understanding? The Atman, the Brahman, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost is infinite. Time or space, finiteness is in space, eternal is in eternity, is in concept of time. So he says, Upanishad says, such a Brahmavit who has achieved the wholesome knowledge and experience of being one with Brahman, such a knower of Brahman, he with his broad, wide open eyes, as he is living and moving and having his being in this world, wherever and wherever his eyes fall, he sees that Spirit and Holy Ghost. That is, his experience has left such a trauma that the vision does not limit his understanding. He goes behind the container and sees what the container contains. The Spirit, the Atman, the Holy Ghost, the Prabhupada. Prano hiesha jas sarvabhutair bevati. He sees the presence of the Divine Lord everywhere. Wherever, wherever his eyes fall, the trauma of his experience, of his realization, has transformed his attitude, perspective, and understanding. Wherever and wherever his eyes fall, he sees it. That is one definition. Sa Atma Krida Atma Rati Kriyavan. Krida and Rati are two Sanskrit words. One means when you play baseball, you have to have all those gadgeteries with you. Otherwise, you can't play. You have to have a ball, you have to have a baseball bat, and all that, and everything else. That means you depend on external items to play the game. That is Kriya, game. And what is Rati? You sit alone and enjoy some of the past memories of your life. You need nobody's help. You are enough. You alone can play the game. That is Rati. He says that realized soul which is being spoken of as the best of the specimens, what is his life like? He plays in this world. And when required, he goes down into deep meditation. He is both here and there. Those fishes high up in the mountain water, when the stream, the, 
get rapid, there is very fast moving current. The big fishes, now known as Mahamatsa, they keep on leisurely cross from one point of this shore to the other point of this shore, and that is their play. They are not tired. Similarly, a Brahmavit who enjoys this capacity to go into Nirvakalpa Samadhi whenever he likes, comes out of it and sees divine everywhere, and his whole life rotates around the awareness of the presence of the divine. Such a Brahmavit and Kriyavan. Atma Krida, Atma Rati, and Kriyavan. What is Kriyavan? Kriyavan is because he sees the divine everywhere, he interacts with humans, those who are not yet aware of their divinity. He stretches his hand to them to hold and take them across, as Jesus the Christ did to Peter in the Sea of Galilee. Hold my hand, Peter. This is the way they live. Therefore, they are said to be the best example of a Brahmavid because his personal wisdom of realization is being utilized for the betterment of humans. And I gave you an example. I'll quickly repeat that, dears. It's a beautiful entrance from the Upanishads also. In a village in ancient India, there used to be little thatched cottages at the end of the village, expecting roaming monks, Paribrajakas, they will have a shelter for the night. And it was rostered in such a manner that they were alert whether anybody is stopping for the night or not. As on when they found somebody had the duty to carry some fruit to him. One Brahmavit, knower of the self, came in. He found a nice little corner, absolutely safe and secure, and he just not latched, closed the door, and he sat into meditation. And he went into samadhi because that's what his life is. A lady comes, makes a little noise to attract his attention. No response. He is in samadhi. After a while, making a little noise here and there, there was no response. So he kept the food there. She kept the food there and said, Dear, dear Reverend Swami, this is your meal. I leave it here. Please take it as and when it is convenient to you. And she left. Next day she comes, she finds that person in the same mood. So she left and went. No response for that sentiment of that lady who has taken the trouble of feeding him. No. He was immersed in samadhi. He goes. Few days later, another swami comes. Another realized soul. And he was very happy. He went to meditation. He heard a little noise. Then he heard somebody addressing him. He brought himself down. Oh, you have brought my food. So kind of you. Now tell me, how are you? What is your family like? What does your husband do? How many children do you have? Absolutely penny, friendly. And that lady was full of joy. Such a realized soul has brought himself down to my level and has interacted me with me as if he's my own. With this interaction with all the three different ladies, because they are not supposed to stay at one place for more than three nights, he goes. Comes the third Brahmavit. And he was equally responsive. Not only responsive, what happened 
one day at morning time, mid morning time, he hears weeping and wailing and crying coming from near about place. He could contain, he couldn't contain himself. He walks out, being guided by the sound that is coming. He finds there is a crowd in a small village cottage and people are all weeping and wailing and express, expressing their agony. So he knows it in. And he found a widow has lost her only child, 10 years old, by snake bite. That person went in, sat by that body of the boy, next to their bereaved mother, and started comforting him. He didn't go back to his cottage. He spent the whole day and night till the boy was cremated and continued to stay in the village beyond three days limit to see that the villagers and the mother are very well comforted, collected. Then with their permission, he left. What is happening, dear? As far as the quantum of Brahmagyana is concerned, there is no percentage in it. Either you are or you are not. But look into the behavior pattern. One is unresponsive, one is mildly responsive, and the other involves himself with the masses. Sharing and caring, sympathizing and empath empathizing, and trying to help them. Now, dears, tell me, according to your thinking, who is the best? <laughs> I'm sure it is the third. the third. That means the behavior pattern of a realized soul, when he is away from his samadhi and lives in this world of ours, he brings himself down to the level of people, interact with them in the simplest possible manner, and through that simple language and behavior pattern, they help people to lift their sense of awareness, to be aware of presence of God every moment of their lives. Barishthata does not depend on quantum of your real realization or experience. That is 100%. How you assimilate it, and after assimilation, how you translate it in your behavior pattern is the catch. So when Swamiji said, Oh dear Lord Sri Ramakrishna, you are the rehabilitator of the lost veracity, lost credibility, lost veracity, lost relevance of religion, spiritual sciences. You have established that in your lifetime. And how did you? Not by preaching from the rooftops. You converted your life into an experimental laboratory of all the essential teachings of major religion that leads to the same goal. Highlighting, it leads to the same goal. And the Upanishads say, Jada Nadya Samudre Sandamana Achan Astam Gachanti Nama Rupe Vihaya Tata Vidya Nama Rupad Vimukta Parat Param Upaiti Divya. What does it mean? He says, Haven't you seen rivers coming out from innumerable icicles in the Himalayas? And drop by drop and drop, they form into a stream as thick as your little finger. And the collets, they merge. Ultimately, they become one mighty river. But the original is million icicles. And having merged into a form, into a river, they intermingle, cross the whole landmass of the country, and ultimately, all of them either meet each other, ultimately they go to the sea. 
शुद्धि आर लाइक दैट अ रिवर लूजेज इट्स आइडेंटिटी मर्ज इज विद द ओशन द क्वांटम ऑफ वॉटर इज इन द ओशन द बैंक्स हैव फॉलन ऑफ देर इज नो राइट बैंक नो लेफ्ट बैंक नो बेट बट द क्वांटम वॉटर दे सेंस श्री रामकृष्ण इन इज ओन सिंपल वर्ड पुट अक्रॉस दीज नोबल मैन मेकिंग कैरेक्टर बिल्डिंग आइडियाज नोन एज धर्म होल्डिंग ऑन टू विच यू प्रिवेंट योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम डिग्रेडिंग एंड एट द सेम टाइम होल्डिंग ऑन टू विच यू हेल्प योर सेल्फ टू मैनिफेस्ट द डिविनिटी विच इज ऑलरेडी विद इन यू so when swami vivekananda writes this poem and we all recite it we must pay due attention not to the phonetics of it the sound generated in singing and music not to the dictionary meaning of it but identify ourselves what is the essential teaching of the shloka the essential teaching of the shloka is sir you have revolutionized the thinking of the world about what is dharma how you rehabilitate it by converting your personality into a testing laboratory and having done that you have brought the vedanta which originated in the forest you have brought it to every human door this is the essential meaning of this pranam mantra so dears let us repeat it once again and i thank you for your attention let us say om sthapakaya ch dharmasya sarva dharma swarupini avatar varishthaya राम कृष्णाय ते नम द वर्ड वरिष्ठता शुड नॉट बी इंटरप्रेटेड एज अ बिगॉटेड फैनेटिक स्टेटमेंट डोंट डू दिस इनजस्टिस टू स्वामी जीज कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अ यूनिवर्सल रिलीजन थैंक यू डियर्स थैंक यू